We've lost, it strikes me, two world leaders in a sense this week in very different circumstances. Boris Johnson, of course, forced to step down as prime minister of the United Kingdom. But then at the end of the week, we lost to an assassin's bullet, Shinzo Abe, the longest serving Japanese prime minister in history. I, I wonder, is this telling us anything larger about the state of the world when we have these sorts of events in a single week? You know, what the assassination of Shinzo Abe in Japan is a tragedy. It is a tragedy for his family. It is a tragedy for uh, Japan. It is a tragedy for the Japanese-American relationship, which is a linchpin of our whole approach uh, to Asia. Ultimately, I think it is a uh, global uh, tragedy. And I have to think about what it represents. And it represents a manifestation of a kind of swirling anger uh, that seems far too pervasive in our politics almost everywhere in the world. In a very different way, Brexit, Boris Johnson's ascendancy represents that kind of swirling anger and his ultimately falling uh, from power is a product of these kinds of divisions. And we certainly see this uh, in our own country with the question of orderly succession of power on uh, the table with the bitter controversies that surround uh, the uh, Supreme Court. And so I think ultimately all of us have to reckon with uh, this uh, rage um, that seems to be a feature that cuts across uh, very, very many uh, societies. And that is going to be a uh, a framing uh, aspect as we discuss the more narrow particulars of economic policy going forward. Larry, it strikes me that uh, former Prime Minister Abe had a fairly profound, I believe, macroeconomic effect, unlike a lot of prime ministers and that matter presidents, even had it named after him, Abenomics. What was Abenomics, and in the end, did it work? Abenomics was an attempt uh, to jolt uh, the Japanese economy out of two decades of uh, secular s stagnation and disinflation with radically expansionary policy, both on the fiscal side and on the monetary side, and with uh, structural policies like major efforts to get women working and enfranchised in uh, the labor force. And I, I think one would have to say that it was a success by the standards of what had come before, but it was not a fully mission uh, accomplished in terms of what was happening uh, in uh, Japan. But I think it will be remembered as one of the more aggressive and successful reprogrammings of macroeconomic strategy that we've seen in a long time. And if, as I fear, um, after this current inflationary episode, the issues of absorbing savings, secular stagnation that we've talked about on and off on uh, this show recur in Europe and in the United States, then I think that Abenomic legacy will be studied very, very carefully because, in some sense, Japan was the first to experience uh, the challenge of demographic uh, contraction and of excess saving, but it may not ultimately be the last. Bringing it back to the United States and some of those questions you just mentioned about inflation, uh, we got jobs numbers at the end of this week, uh, higher in the terms of the overall addition to jobs, at the same time a little lower than was expected by some, at least, in the wage increases. What did you make of the jobs numbers? Look, I think we have a very ambiguous uh, economy uh, right now. We've got indicators of strength in 
many in many sectors, particularly travel and uh, services. This was a strong employment report once again in, a, in an economy where the labor force only grows by 50 or 75,000 people a month. You can't forever be creating 375,000 uh, jobs. Uh, there's nothing here to suggest uh, that uh, the economy is currently collapsing into a uh, recession. And we certainly could have seen a wage inflation number that was much more alarming. And so from that point of view, I think there was a little bit of reassurance on uh, inflation here. But we still have a very ambiguous uh, picture. I don't think that this changes fundamentally the picture we had uh, coming in, that uh, interest rates are still considerably below where they're going to need to be, that the economy has very considerable uh, inflation uh, risks, and that the Fed has the challenge of trying to achieve as soft a landing as uh, possible in an airplane that's on a very complicated kind of trajectory. So I think that most people are saying there's little in these jobs numbers that would indicate to the Federal Reserve that they should back off, at least yet, the rate hikes. Do you agree with that? And what factors should they be looking at as they determine whether, in fact, and when they should back off? I think that there's nothing here that should change somebody's mind in a major way about what monetary policy is going to need to need to do at the next meeting or at uh, probably the meeting uh, after uh, the next uh, meeting. I think what would uh, start to change things would uh, be very strong evidence that the economy was slowing substantially in an across-the-board way with respect to consumption and uh, investment demand. I think if you saw a precipitous decline in the level of uh, vacancies and level of labor turnover, that would be an indicator that I would be watching. But as long as we're in almost unprecedented, or actually unprecedented territory in terms of the ratio of job openings to uh, unemployed people, I don't think we can stop being uh, concerned about uh, inflation. So, so, Larry, something I'm curious about uh, from you as an economist, is it possible to have a recession when we have full employment or very close to full employment? Uh, or uh, another way to put it is, do we have to have a precipitous fall in employment or rise in unemployment before we really should be very concerned about recession? I think it would be hard to imagine a recession in which you didn't have some meaningful increase in uh, unemployment. It's not something we have ever seen uh, before. And in some ways, the very definition of recession is a broad gauge to uh, sustain decline in economic activity. And the act of hiring and working is the central part of that economic activity. So could we see two quarters in a row with GDP decline? Yeah, I do think it's possible that we'll see that uh, between the first and two quarters, second quarters of this year. But would that be something that we would think about as a recession in the classical sense if it wasn't coupled with employment statistics different from the ones we've seen? I don't think the National Bureau of Economic Research would or should label that a recession. So how concerned at this point are you about a recession, Larry? I still think uh, the dominant prospect is that we will have a recession in, uh, within the next uh, year or two. I think the chances that it has already begun look a little bit diminished to me relative to what I would have guessed several weeks uh, ago. Not impossible, but I think more unlikely than I would have judged uh, several weeks ago from the recent numbers.